My name is John Dawson, and I'm doing a series of um, videos on various uh, etching techniques. Um, one of the probably most important etching techniques is uh, doing aquatint. There are about eight or ten different ways to do an aquatint. Uh, this is the second video in the series on doing aquatints, of which I'll do probably um, about four videos um, exploring uh, many of the ways to do aquatint. Well, a uh, salt ground aquatint is not particularly complicated. Essentially, you have to uh, apply a ground and then the salt. Uh, to start with, um, if you use table salt, just plain table salt, you're going to get a, a very coarse uh, aquatint. And if that's what you want, this works just fine. To get a, a much uh, finer aquatint, you put the table salt into a pestle and mortar, and you grind it down until the salt is uh, almost like a powder. And you, you can apply it uh, the same way you would the table salt, and it makes a much uh, uh, finer, smoother aqua tint. Now, if you don't have a pestle and mortar, which uh, a lot of people don't, um, you can get a, a thing in the store, in the grocery store, called popcorn salt. Now, um, it's much finer, and it's not quite as fine as you can get if you, if you use the pestle and mortar, but it's much finer than the table salt, and it makes a pretty good aqua tint. Um, this is not easy to find. Not every grocery store has it. And uh, you probably won't find it uh, with the salt. You'll find it, um, coincidentally enough, uh, with the popcorn. If you can't find it in the grocery store, you can, um, you can get it online. Now, to apply the salt, there are a couple different ways. Uh, one, of course, is just to put it in a salt shaker. And you apply the salt like you would salting anything. And the second way is to uh, do like we did uh, earlier in an earlier video with the rosin aqua tint. You take a piece of uh, cheesecloth and put it in a, a strainer. You want just one ply of the cheesecloth, so it's pretty thin. And you tape it down with some scotch tape. And then you put the salt uh, in, the, um, in the strainer and you just uh, hold it over the plate and and tap it. And that makes a pretty nice uh, salt ground um, uh, co coating, covering. Now as far as the uh, ground is concerned, uh, the most common uh, ground to use for a salt aqua tint is um, soft ground. You cover a plate with soft ground like we I have this plate. Uh, I'm not going to go through how to do a uh, soft ground uh, on the plate. We've already covered that in an earlier uh, video. And then you put the, you, you, um, you apply the salt to the plate um, in either method that you use. Then you're going to take and put the plate on the press, put a little piece of paper over it, and uh, run it through the press put it in a tank of water to dissolve the salt, and then you're ready to stop out whatever areas you want to stop out and, um, and then etch the plate. The second way to do this is a little more complicated. It involves using uh, printer's ink, the, the same ink that you use to print uh, your, uh, your, your uh, plates. So um, we'll show you how to do that. Here we have uh, examples of the three different um, salt ground aquatints. As you can see, the, um, the table salt uh, one is uh, a lot more uh, speckly and coarse than the other two. The popcorn salt actually makes a pretty nice aquatint, and then uh, the crushed salt is a much uh, finer and uh, smoother sort of aquatint. Okay, the, um, the other method for doing salt ground is, uh, as I said, with um, uh, printer's ink. Uh, it's the same ink you probably use for proofing or your additions. And we're going to roll this 
off onto a glass palette and then apply it to the plate. Well, as I said, you need to spread out some ink and then uh, roll it onto the uh, plate um, that we're going to be doing the, the aqua tint on. Next, you have to put the plate on a hot plate and then uh, continue to roll it out, uh, getting it uh, smooth and as, uh, as thin as you possibly can. It helps uh, to periodically change rollers to a clean roller and picks up a little more ink. And once you get it uh, rolled out uh, very flat and thin, um, then you're ready to add the salt. You can apply the salt with a salt shaker, as I'm doing here. Or, of course, there's uh, the other option. Uh, then there's the method using the strainer. I often use both. I do the strainer for a good part of it, and then I fill in areas with the uh, salt shaker. And this is uh, about how the plate uh, should look when you're done uh, applying the salt. Uh, next, you put the, uh, the plate on the, the press bed and cover it with a piece of paper. And uh, you're going to run it through the press. Uh, sometimes I let the plate uh, sit overnight at this point to let the ink have a chance to set up. But uh, it's really probably not that necessary. You're going to put it into a tank of water and uh, dissolve the salt. And here are a couple test plates to uh, show the uh, different um, kinds of agua tints that you uh, can get with this um, ink and uh, salt uh, ground uh, aqua tint. Uh, one of the problems with this uh, ink and uh, salt method is that the ink really doesn't dry, and um, unlike the, um, the use of soft ground, if you touch uh, the, um, the aqua tint uh, or the salt area um, at any point, it's going to leave an impression and usually will totally ruin the aqua tint. So if you're going to do um, uh, a number of etches where you're going to take, put the plate in the acid, take it out, dry it, and then um, stop out and then continue to etch. Uh, don't, uh, don't blot it dry. Uh, either let it air dry or you could use a hair dryer to dry it if you're more of a hurry. Here in the desert southwest, everything dries very quickly, so I rarely have to do that. Um, the other thing about uh, this particular um, aqua tint. Um, the first time that I did it, uh, I didn't think it would work. Um, as I watched it etch, I was convinced nothing was happening. The thing wasn't working at all. And then when I printed it, I was very surprised to see what an interesting aqua tint it made. A little different, really, than, than other aqua tints. Very nice, I thought. Um, years ago, uh, when I first got the press almost 20 years ago, a good friend of mine who uh, m I think majored in the printmaking suggested to me that if you had lines in the plate that you wanted to etch deeper, um, you could go over the plate with a layer of ink exposed, letting the, uh, the lines that you wanted to etch deeper exposed, and then re-etch it. Don't ever do it. He must never have tried it. I have totally ruined two plates doing that. And I don't mean damaged, I mean completely ruined. And the reason that doesn't work, I think, is the reason why this does work. Uh, it may be just guesswork on my part, but I think what's happening here is uh, when you put the plate in the, um, the acid with uh, other uh, salt ground methods, or in fact, a lot of other uh, aqua tint methods, all the little indentations through the ground etch and the ground doesn't etch. But I think in this case, what's really happening is the, um, the salt particles that eat through the, uh, the ground etch quickly and the ink continues to etch 
but at a much slower rate. So you get a, a much different and I think a, a, a very interesting aqua tint for this. Uh, this next method is, uh, it's referred to as an aqua tint. It's not really uh, like a traditional aqua tint. And as a matter of fact, there are a number of, uh, of things that are called aqua tints that um, are not, uh, technically speaking, a traditional aqua tint um, like you would see in an old master print. Um, I suppose that's because there's just uh, no other really good term for it. Um, they make interesting textures uh, when you print them and um, and uh, they're w worth uh, worth doing. Uh, this is a plate-to-plate uh, -plate ink transfer method uh, for an aqua tint. And you're going to need two plates. The, the first one is the plate you're working on, the plate that you want to have the aqua tint on. And then you're going to need a blank plate that's exactly the same size as the plate that you're working on. Now, if you don't have a, um, a blank uh, plate, um, a piece of plexiglass that's exactly the same size will also work. I haven't actually tried that, but I understand it'll, it'll work just fine. Then you're going to need a, um, a piece of cardboard that's uh, cut to the width of your press. And what's going to happen is we're going to take um, printer's ink, the same ink you usually use for proofing or your additions. We're going to uh, coat the blank plate with the ink. Then we're going to put it upside down on top of the plate that you want to transfer the ink to. And the uh, cardboard is used as a stopper. You want to keep the plate the top plate from moving or smearing onto the bottom plate. So the cardboard acts as a stopper. We're going to tape it down and we're also going to tape down the two plates and then run it through the press. In rolling out the ink, it needs to be uh, pretty flat and thin. It, uh, if it gets too thick and gooey, it, uh, it won't work. Uh, the cardboard uh, needs to be uh, extra thick. It, um, it has to be thicker than the two plates that um, you're going to put against it. Uh, otherwise, uh, they will probably just slip and that uh, defeats the purpose of the cardboard. So then uh, you're going to put down your first plate, your key plate, and then you're going to put the inked plate on top of that. Then uh, we need to tape down uh, each side, or at least I do, to try and make sure they don't slip. And then um, you'll be ready to, uh, to run it through the press. Now you're probably going to need to um, lessen the pressure on the press because um, you have uh, two plates instead of one. And uh, when it's through the press, you can take uh, the first plate off and you can get an idea of uh, what the plate-to-plate -plate ink transfer looks like. This print is entitled Slaughter and it's the one I was uh, using in the video to do the plate-to-plate -plate ink transfer on. This uh, is a detail uh, from the print to show what the um, aqua tints look like uh, when they're printed up. Well, that, uh, that about does it for this one. Uh, we'll follow this up with uh, some other examples of prints of mine. And uh, the web address for my web page and Facebook page. And if you're interested, you can also uh, subscribe to other uh, videos of mine on YouTube.